so uh, I'm Paul Ford from Arm, work on uh, Ember Cloud, uh, which is the, the website infrastructure supporting uh, the IoT for millions of IoT devices. Um, uh, so as you said, when we're talking a bit about types today, uh, as you've probably heard of, you know, there's a lot of a lot of kind of enthusiasm around around types coming up with uh, languages like TypeScript and things you can do in JavaScript and uh, languages like Rust and Scala and Kotlin popularizing this sort of thing and um, and and as you've probably heard, this is something we can start to do in, in Python as well with with annotations. So I'm going to try and convince you that this is a good thing that we should all be doing and um, and show you a bit about how we can how we can start to do that. So first of all, what what is type? Uh, I think of it as just a sort of abstraction for a bunch of possible values. So, as so it's, it's like integer. It's this this variable is is anything that tells us what possible values it could take on. Type or a type system is also a tool for reasoning about program correctness, it allows us to say whether something is going to work the way we intend it to work or not. Um, you may have heard a quote from um, Milner, a computer scientist who's, who's sort of sort of infamously says something, and I think it gets a lot of grief for those people perhaps taking it the wrong way, that um, uh, I can't remember the exact quote, that, that types, typed, typed programs don't go wrong or something like that. And of course, people say, like, "Oh, this, you know, this is not true." But I think w what's actually meant by that is that um, there are large categories of, of problems that type systems allow you to avoid. Uh, that's not to say that you might still do something wrong in your program. Of course, you might, but um, but they allow you an extra way to express your intent behind uh, behind what your program does. And if that type check's okay, then it gives you some sort of guarantee about that you're actually, you've written what you intended to. So types follow the syntactic structure of terms, which means that if this is lambda calculus, lambda x or m is a function, that, so in Python you might read uh, def f of x return m, uh, whatever m is, maybe that's a global variable, say. Uh, and so then if, if x has type a and m has type b, then because types follow this, this syntactic structure where you can say automatically that the function that takes x and returns m is of type a to b because x is type a and b, uh, and sorry, m is type b. So that, that automatically tells us about the type of the function. Now having looked at that, you're probably thinking, this is not why I like Python. I don't want to do this in my Python. I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to learn about lambda calculus. I don't want to I don't want to use any, any types. Uh, that's not what Python's for, right? Uh, that's something I hear people say. I've definitely heard, heard colleagues say that, um, you know, that, that's, not, that's not why they like to use Python. But Zen of Python says things like explicit is better than implicit. Um, and uh, just yesterday, I, I saw someone struggling with, struggling with a door, one of these doors that has, has these handles sticking out on the door and sort of pulling it and trying to open the door and then eventually it turned out it was a push door, it needed to be pushed. But you know, the handle on it was, was misleading him into thinking it was a, a door that needed to be pulled. Um, so I think the thing is that explicit is better than implicit because often we get implicit wrong. These cues like the handle on the door is, is misleading. It's, it's an implicit sign that, that the door needs to be pulled but it just, it just wasn't true. Um, uh, in industrial design, I think this is called an affordance, and in human-computer interaction as well. Uh, so, so, so that's that, the analogy. There is that it's like a type, a type hint in Python. The annotation in, in Python here called a type hint as well. It's hinting that the door is of type pull door, but that that wasn't true in that case. So it's it's better to be explicit. It also says that readability counts. Uh, types make our code more readable because we, uh, I'll show some examples in a second, where, uh, where, where code, a variable name is maybe not expressive enough to say what it's actually doing or what it contains or, or what you pass to a function. And in, in the face of ambiguity, refuse the temptation to guess. We don't want to be guessing what, 
what that variable is. We, we, we want something that tells us more, more directly exactly what it is. So the other thing people say is, if I'm writing Python, if it smells like a duck, I, I don't really care what type it is. But you, but you do, that, that is what you're saying. You're saying if it, if it talks like a duck, walks like a duck, smells like a duck, whatever, that, that is, you're describing the type. You want the type of thing that smells like a duck. Duck typing is an abstraction for a bunch of possible values, just like I said a type is. Uh, if, you know, something that has attribute dot read, it, it, I'm saying, I want, you know, I'm expecting this to be a value that has a dot read. That, that is, that fits into the definition of what I said a type is. So, typing Python is, is not at all incompatible with that wish. So it's the real code, I promise. This, these are all real examples I found in, in the, the code base I'm working on day to day. So this, this function, save event, takes an argument called event. Okay, it's, all right, so far, maybe the doc string tells me something more about that. Oh, it's the event to save, okay. Um, now, I can say there's nothing special about, there's nothing domain specific about an event for me. An event doesn't, doesn't mean anything uh, more to me than it does to you looking at that. Deployed devices, okay, that, that probably returns like some kind of collection of, of devices that are deployed. So that seems reasonable to me. Uh, no, it, it returns the integer count of devices that are deployed. I, I don't know about you, but I never would have guessed that looking at that, at that function. Get firmware manifests, and I think that took some arguments that like, not important. Returns the manifest contents or none, if none. Okay, that, that's a bit better. That's more reasonable. It's telling me, you know, something a bit more about what it returns. But I still don't really understand what manifest contents are from that. It could be, uh, that could be uh, bytes or you know, dicks of, of some s more stuff that's inside the manifest. But you know, it turns out to be a string. That's not terrible, but it, you know, could certainly be improved. And finally, just this. So this, this is one that actually does have a type annotation, and it's telling me that it's a dict. But okay, you know, if I get it, I have a, a dict of some stuff, and you know, what's what's inside that? What can I actually, what can I actually do with that? So, on the assumption that I've maybe convinced you at least slightly that this is something you might want to do, how do we actually do that in Python? So the basic syntax is we have an identifier, uh, just you know our variable name that we that we usually have, and then we have equals a value, but we had this type annotation before it, colon the type, and then equals a the value. Or we might have a more complex type that takes uh, in square brackets some some uh, some other type that that customizes it more further. I'm using sort of vague words here because I don't want to because uh, I'll, I'll get to explain that a bit more later. Or in functions, uh, we have the argument type annotated in the same way, and then the return type after a sort of uh, dash angle bracket arrow to say what type it's going to return. Uh, and there it is in a function with a, a default value. So you might have password is, uh, we're saying it's a string, hunter2, which I mean, we can see clearly that that's a string, and uh, so we, we don't need to do that. If we're using a tool like MyPy to analyze this, it, 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 can, it can figure that out. It's not, it's not that stupid, uh, but this is just, just an example to show you. Um, so then increment is a function that takes a number. We said it's an integer, and we increment by another number, uh, which defaults to one, and then what we return is, of course, still an integer. Sets, tuples, and, sets, tuples, and lists. Um, these are an example of the more kind of uh, customizable type I mentioned. So, uh, so we have we say we say that it's a set, and then in the square brackets we say what it's a set of. What what is the type of of each element of that set? Similarly with tuple, we list. So we might have two, three, four, n different. Uh, things inside it and what are the types of each of those things. And of course, these might be different things. It might be a tuple of string and int. Or the other form of a tuple is to say it's, this, this is the type and it could have any number of those, of those types. 
in it. So, so we don't know if this is a two tuple, a three tuple, a four tuple, but elements of it, however many it has, will be of this type. And similarly list. So for example, Python's is a set um, due to constraints on the page. It's, it's, it's a mutable object that uh, may have more added to it. And certainly, well, if you're familiar with the, the Pythons, as I'm sure you all are. Um, so we see that that's a set of strings. A talk, like this one, types, pylondinium, string, string. My initials are OJF. Someone's initials might be, might, they might have two initials, they might have five initials. So we say that each, each element of initials is a, is a string, uh, but we don't know how many of those we're going to have. In my case, it's three. It might not be. Talks, list of talks that I have given uh, is a list of those talks from previously. Uh, so, and they were of type tuple string string. So you can see we can nest these customizable types within each other. Dictionaries. So now again, like like saw and tuples uh, have, have two types, but rather than referring to the same sort of thing there, as you might guess, referring to the key type and the value type. So if identify a dict type type because value, uh, so the age of people is a dictionary that maps uh, from, from, from a certain age to a list of people that have that age. So we'd write dict int list string is quite old, goes from string to bool. So Fred, if he's 123, he's quite old. So, so we put him in our is quite old dict. Uh, and people ages is a function that then reverses that age people dict. Um, so it's turning, we can, we can see that it takes, in, it takes in this age people dict intestra um, and it defaults to age people. And then what it's returning is the opposite of that. So before we even look at the, at the implementation of that, it, it, it's, it's giving us a, a much, much more detailed hint than, than just, the, just the name alone does. Um, we, we can sort of guess more just from, just from looking at the type hints what, what the semantics of this function actually are. You know, if we see something that's, that's people, people ages, you know, takes a single argument that's dict into str and returns dict str to in. Well, it's, you know, we, we can make a reasonably good assumption about what that, what that function might do. So we don't always care about the precise container type. You know, we've seen dicts, strings, tuples now. Uh, we might just want something that we can iterate through, it would say whether something contains nuts. We don't care what the thing is, it just, we just want to look for nuts inside it. So we can use uh, an iterable type when we want to do this. And similarly, sequence when we want some notion of order on the thing. Say we, we're writing a function that returns the, uh, the, the middle element from, from some thing. So the, the general sort of advice or best practice here is to, is to be as flexible as possible in your arguments so that your, your caller can, can give you, the, um, they're not as constrained in, in what they can, they can supply you. Um, so if we're, if, we're returning, if we're returning the initials, people's, the letters that someone's surname begins with for a bunch of people, uh, rather than mandating that the person supplies us with a list of, of, of people's initials. We can say, mm, we don't really care about that actually, we just want something that we can iterate through. And then they can give us a tuple if, if that's more convenient to them. But when we return something, we should be specific that we, what we're returning to you is, is a set of, of things rather than just saying it's something that's, that's iterable again. Because then, then when they get that value back, they can be more specific about what, what they can actually do with it. Whereas if we just said we're returning an iterable, uh, if they're also utilizing a tool like MyPy themselves, then they'll be more limited in what they can do because they'll, they'll only be able to do the things that you could do with, uh, with any iterable. So not all functions return values, right? We might be returning none, uh, like in the print keys example from, from the dict page. So we can annotate that just with none. We just say we're returning none here. 
or we can use optional to say that we might return none or we might return something else, like when I showed the, um, the example of the manifest contents that, that might return the, uh, I think it was a string, or, or it might return none if the contents was none. So init, for example, always returns none. Or we might say we can print keys in some sort of color, and that's an optional, optional string. So what if I think it's not that it might be none, but it but it might be it might be an integer or it might be a string? Well, we can use something called union for that, which says says exactly that. It's one of the it's it's either this thing or another thing or something else. Again, this is I've shown two here, but it could be three different things that that it might be. I'm gonna have to start to speed up slightly. So uh, our args and quags, uh, what we type here is 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 not the not the full thing that we're getting, but just the just the elements inside. So, if if each of our if each of our args is an int, then we say uh, that our star args are type are type int, and then what we actually get when we use it when we're checking with MyPy is uh, is is a tuple of that thing n length inside. And similarly with quarks, it's always a dict from from string, which you know, of course, it is the string being the the name of the of the argument to whatever type we specify. Just reduces the verbosity, really. So we might define a function cat that concatenates a bunch of strings that you give it. Uh, so we don't have to annotate that it's a it takes a tuple of str. We just we just say str because I mean it it actually doesn't take a tuple of str anyway, right? It takes those expanded. And similarly, set feature flags, flags might take uh, uh, any number of quags, but each of them has to be bool. If we want to type something that's a callable, then we uh, we have two things again, but the first one is actually a, a list in its own right, so a list of the argument types, and then the, the second thing being uh, uh, the type that it returns. So we might have, for example, something that's a kind of not great re-implementation of, of map that just only works for integers. So we take something that's a callable from int to int and we return, um, well, in this case, an iterable of ints. That's not actually what map would return, but never mind. So generators and iterators. Um, so generators have three, th yield type, send type, return type. Uh, or in the case of an iterator, it's more, more sp uh, more sort of specialized uh, generator, we have only the yield type, just the thing that we're, we're yielding, uh, which is you know, quite often only, only what we're using if we have something like this where we're saying I for I in, in range 100, um, or indeed just range 100 actually. Um, then that's an, that's an iterator of int. Or if we're doing some sort of request and uh, getting a stream response from that, then each of our chunks, um, our chunks come back in an iterator. Classes, we, we might, you know, if we ha we have something that we've defined ourselves, we want to use, um, uh, passing, it, you know, in, in, into our functions as, as of course we do. Otherwise, you know, why are we why are we using it? Then then it's only natural that we want to use that as a type hint as well, uh, and that is just as simple as being the, the class name. So we just annotate uh, if we've defined our class foo, then we are using um, and we use that as the type hint. Type, um, all these things, by the way, that I'm mentioning, are, they're all in, in typing in the standard library, so this is like from typing, import type. Type is then, then says the, the, the type of that, so that's, that's, that's saying not the, not, we're not, we're annotating that it's, it's not an instance of foo, but it's, uh, it's foo itself, it's, it's, the, it's the, the, the class, um, Yeah, it's, it's, hopefully that makes more sense than, <laughs> than I'm speaking. So similarly, if, we, if we've defined our own meta classes, then, then I think this is where it makes more sense because if we, we might say we want something that's, um, that's the, the type of bar, and so then we know that we're getting, we're getting, we're getting bars, i.e. instances of bar meta, rather than, rather than instances of bar, which we would get if we just used, if we just used bar. Now this, I think, is, 
is worth is worth understanding because um, we've seen a few times is people thinking thinking type is just well that's that's the thing I want right I want the I want the type bar so I I write type no actually you, you know if you if you're saying you want to be getting bars i.e. instances of bars um, into your function then you just use bar uh, type bar is not instance the class itself. So if we've seen that we can use uh, classes as types, then we might start to think, actually, you know, should we be using dicks, all these massive dicks that we're passing around everywhere? Maybe, maybe you should, do we need to define classes for those as well? You know, until now, we've, we've made do with dicks. But actually, there's, there are some nice helpers for these. Um, named tuple and typed dict um, in, in typing and, and typed dict from MyPy extensions which uh, allow us to, to write these classes and just say, say what, what things are in them, so name tuple analogously to um, lowercase name tuple from collections, uh, and type dict, um, just allowing us to say what the, what the keys are that come, in, come inside this dict and, and what the types are of those constituent elements. So when we start to nest these together more deeply, it can get a bit hard to read. Um, we saw people's initials, which is an iterable of a sequence of string. You know, and if we start to do something that has people's initials inside, it's going to get really long really quickly. So we might want to alias initials to be sequence of string, and then we can just say uh, that people's initials is an iterable of initials. That's much nicer. We can also use new type, uh, which, which allows us to say this is not just it's not just an alias. This is something we actually want to be constructing. Uh, to allow us to distinguish more safely between between things, so we work with a lot of different IDs of different things. I'm sure, you know, when people have something similar, you can think of where things look very similar but um, are actually different, and you know, you don't want to confuse them. If you have a function, say, that's taking an account ID as well as a device ID, I want to be damn sure I get those the right way around. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to have bugs that are pretty hard to, to trace down why this thing didn't exist, and it's actually because I confused them up. Um, whereas if we use new types for that, then, then we're making sure that we constructed a, um, a device ID or an account ID, and so we get the right one in the right place. Um, I'm going to go really quickly over this because I'm <laughs> going to run out of time otherwise. But so type variables uh, differ from unions. Um, in allowing us to say that the thing we the thing we get is is not just it's not just that it can be any of these things, um, but the one the one that we get as the argument to the function is is the one that we're going to refer to somewhere else. So we might have um, we could use it going back to our map int uh, function for example. Say we want to make that more generic, like the real map. Um, then then the, then the callable thing that's callable from our type variable to type variable, the thing we return is going to then be an iterator of that same type. Whereas if we use unions in those two places, then we're saying that the, the callable we take is from any of those things to any of those things, and the return type is also to any of those things. So we might be returning an iterator of strings even though your function was mapping from ints to ints, actually. So there's some also some pretty neat methods uh, like supports int, supports bytes, for example, that just allow us to say that dunder init is something that's available, um, or, or hashable, for example, says that, um, that from collections.hashable, I should say, says that dunder hash is something that's available. And where duck typing really comes, comes into it, and you start to see how this is Pythonic again, is because we can say, we can, we can say that the type of something is this protocol, this is in 3.7, I should say, that, um, Something that something that looks like this um, it is is what we is what we expect what we want to use. So note that that our concrete class is not is not deriving template. It's not an instance of template. It's just something that has certain attributes or signatures or, or there's something about it. It's in some way template like. It, it, template is the definition of things that that smell like ducks and concrete is something that smells sufficiently much like a duck for our purposes. Uh, and just a few things to finish up um, that are helpful when you're getting started. Uh, forward references, if you're defining less than on, on a class, then um, then the other thing you, you want is 
something of, of, the same, of the same type as the class you're defining on, but the class name isn't fully defined yet, so we just put that in, in quotes to be able to refer to it ahead of time. Cast when you need to, uh, is instance checks can not be fully understood sometimes, um, so even though you know it's correct, it might, I might not fully understand that. Any, you use it sparingly because it kind of defeats the point. Type checking is true while we're type checking uh, and then false at runtime, so this can be useful for some imports. If we have something that's quite expensive to import and we're doing it because we want to type annotate a, a class from somewhere else, then that can be helpful to hide that behind a, a, behind a, a guard there that says only to run if we're type checking. And there's an awful lot more that I haven't covered. Uh, I trust you can read the typing docs. Uh, if this excites you, there are a bunch of peps. Um, a book I really recommend for the theory, if you're interested in the theory, uh, or if you're interested in a language that takes typing more to heart and does more exciting things with it, check out Rust. Um, trolling slightly. Thank you very much. <laughs>